its body other than the face itself. There are in fact four different types of, uh, you know, what we think of as Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Very wide, pronounced nose. There was also a very ominous uh, odor. Phase one is to identify opportunities. I walked into a small clearing uh, and less than 10, 15 feet away from uh, this enormous creature and uh, it scared the living hell out of me. Phase two is conducting investigations both of witnesses and locations. The size of the thing, it was, you know, four or five feet across the shoulders. Phase three is profiling research areas, what's there, how they move, feeding, things like that. About eight feet tall, I guessed around 800 pounds, it was massive. I had no idea that anything like that existed. Phase four is create an intercept plan. I decided to shoot in the air to see if maybe it would scare it off. Phase five is the intercept and resolve the issue phase. It didn't do anything, didn't react. And then I heard a noise from my right rear and from out behind some brush come another one and walked over by the first one. That's when I decided to do what the dog did. I took off running. Welcome to Witness of the Unknown. Hello everyone. I have a special treat today. I'm speaking with a good friend, Dave Thundercloud. Dave, how are you doing, buddy? I'm okay. How are you all doing tonight? Good, good. You know, I usually don't. And of course, you know, you've heard enough of my interviews. I don't really have a, a set format. What I usually do is just sort of uh, let the person, the witness, do the talking. Um, you know, I, I don't like to add things into an interview. So, um, I guess... Just start off how you first got involved in all this and, and kind of take us through, you know, things that have happened. Okay, well, I first start, when I first started, oh, goodness, it's been a while now. Uh, I started in 2016, so I'm, I'm kind of, I'm new. I uh, haven't been around uh, a lot of, like, yourself and, and the other fellas, Jeremiah and everything. Um, I actually started by accident. Um, I was checking out some reports, and I was curious uh, about uh, the big, you know, the, the Bigfoot and the legends and everything like that. Um, so what had happened is um, I was, you know, like people that, that aren't used to these things or, you know, whatever, uh, creatures or animals or whatever, Neanderthals, whatever you want to call them. Um, so, you know, I was skeptical and, and um, I'd heard that uh, in Maryland, because I'm in Maryland State, we uh, ended up having a, a sighting in 2016, and that really kind of just uh, uh, kind of set me on the kind of you know a blazing path, so to speak. Um, so what had happened? Um, I, as soon as I found out about the, the, the sighting, I immediately started researching it. Well, come to find out, which really blew my mind was the sighting was actually no more than like 30 minutes from me, and. Uh, researching further, I started to find out that we'd had reoccurring sightings that were um, actually close to my home. Um, so uh, what I did is I researched the area. Um, the person who gave the report, um, he didn't really tell exactly where it was, um, but just through um, kind of taking some of the clues sure. uh, that they left, um, I ended up finding the area. Um, it's actually an area that we call uh, 295 Corridor. Um, it's actually two areas, 295 Corridor, and um, we had some more sightings in Annapolis, but let me let me not get ahead. Uh, so I researched the area. I went out there. Um, it wasn't too many people. This is a large area. Has like, I think they have like uh, one of our main rivers. I think it's like Patuxent. That's one of our main rivers. Uh, Patuxent River goes through this area 
a lot of lakes, huge lakes, uh, a lot of coverage. Um, just, it's a good area where squash could probably hang at one squash, not a family, could probably kind of, you know, lay low for about two or three days and move on. Um, so I went out and checked the area. I didn't expect anything. Um, fortunately, I met a woman there. Uh, she's a, she kind of frequent the area. She's a avid woods woman or whatever you want to call it. Um, and we, we just, we, it was kind of kismic, you know, we just, we were talking and in my mind, I, I didn't want to say anything to her because once again, I was part skeptical. I didn't know. I just wanted to ask her, had you, have you seen anything? Have you heard anything? But fortunately she just came out. She just poured it out on me. She was like, um, and I, I did not know this lady. I didn't, it, it, this just happened, you know, just, it was luck. Sure. Um, well, blessing. But, uh, she got to talk and she said, uh, yeah, you know, um, I asked her, I said, have, do you frequent this area? She said, yes. And, um, she said, just be careful when you're out here. And I said, why? And then she said, well, because there have been sightings of, of Bigfoot. And I said, oh, you believe in Bigfoot? She said, yeah. She said, yes. I said, okay. I said, well, I have an interest in it. And she said, well, yeah, um, we've had sightings. Um, there's a couple of fishermen that have had sightings. Um, and, and at the time I really didn't, I didn't know, um, all the, the science behind the Sasquatch or the, the hunters were seeing them and things like that. I didn't understand any of that, but she just poured it on me and she was telling me, she was telling me the areas, which was really good. So, um, I made sure I documented that, um, everything that she was telling me. So, uh, what I did is I started to, to, uh, research this area, um, which is not, uh, not far from NSA, um, headquarters, um, cause with DC and I'm, I'm sure you know that. Uh, Captain, well, you um, sure. you probably know all the main places like that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, be way better than me. Uh, so anyway, um, we, I ended up, I started by myself, and I was researching this area. Um, several times I would go out there constantly, uh, at least two to three times a week, just seeing if anything was going on. Um, and at the time, I guess it was good because I was kind of how you say I, I, I didn't know what I was doing so I could not assume you know what what was nature what was you know Sasquatch but the good thing about it was I saw a lot of things and I got a lot of photo evidence so what I did I started taking pictures and there was a there was a guy online I used to take just one picture and but one problem I did have was because I was so in that mindset of, well, if it doesn't look like Patty, it's not a Bigfoot. And, um, I, my mindset was kind of like, well, I'll, I'll just take a picture of this or I'll just take a picture of that, but I don't see Patty. And the strange things that were going on, the sounds I heard or the things I would see around this area, I really didn't, um, I, I, I was kind of, uh, I guess you could say bias or prejudice. If it didn't look like Patty, mm -hmm. then I really wasn't, I didn't really, you know, take it in concern. I didn't understand a lot of things and, um, which like I said before was, was good, but was not good because then everything I saw was not Bigfoot, you know? So every certain things I saw, I could still look with a skeptical eye. Um, so what I started doing was, uh, really documenting the area, um, going out every day, um, trying to, you know, listen to people. Um, I would try to listen to like big fella, you know, the guys like you and, um, and really start watching some of the old guys, uh, the, like the man that was, uh, kidnapped by the Bigfoots. I would listen to a lot of the old, I like hearing a lot of the old stories and the legends. And, um, I would continue to go out. But once again, I still had that mindset of, was Patty, but then I started to hear, you know, people's eyewitness reports and they were telling me like, these things aren't just, you know, big hairy creatures that look like Patty. Some of these things look like primates. Some of them look close to human and that really blew my mind. So anyway, uh, after a while I, I was, was started documenting and I heard a man online and he said, he said, take at least three pictures of everything. 
So that's what I started throwing. And my attitude was kind of like, okay, well, this is cool. You know, I'll just take three pictures of everything. So at this time, I didn't know. I wasn't really on Facebook, and I didn't even know. I, I didn't know about the Facebook groups. I knew about, like, the talk radio, like, uh I found out about your show much later. I think like tw maybe 2017 or something, maybe late 2017. But um, I was just doing, listening to a lot of uh, talk radio, uh, hearing certain things, the old, uh, well, George Norrie, Art Bell, things like that. And um, those shows really didn't, you know, they just kind of told you the legends of Bigfoot and the cool stuff, you know, the horror stories, but it didn't really get to the meat and bones of the science. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just, you know, I kind of just did what I had available to me at that time. Um, so one day I was just in my area, uh, and nightfall came. And what happened was one of the rangers in the area, I saw him before I went in. Um, I just waved to him, and usually I carry kind of a, I carry a, a big bag with me, or a military backpack um, that I got from a surplus store. So I, I didn't want to really start anything or attract a lot of attention or have any questions because I, really, I didn't want to get into it. So he saw me. I saw him. Gave him a polite wave. He gave me a wave. I went on about my business. Um, nightfall came because this was in the winter. And it was like 3 o'clock. And I was uh, kind of, I was somewhat, maybe about two hours in. Um which would take me about two hours to get out. So I went in, did a few things. The night was coming fast, and things got a little creepy. Um, to be honest, I don't know what was around it. It just felt creepy. It felt like something was kind of looking at me when I was, uh, when I was coming out. It felt kind of like something was following me. So when I came out uh, of the, the woods, uh, the ranger had, had was running. He ran to his vehicle. So I was... I didn't know exactly what to do. I didn't know what was going on. So what I did is this is when I kind of started trying to document things on video because I really didn't understand about video or audio when you're researching. Um, but I, I videoed him and, um, I, I got him, but he, I mean, he was just tearing out of there. And I, to this day, I don't know what it was. Uh, I, I really don't know what's going on, but, um, from there after that incident, I, saw, I held on to the video. Um, and just kept documenting. And then I just thought to myself after that incident, I said, I've, I've got to try to get some kind of, uh, something behind this. Cause I, I just, it was old, kind of starting to overwhelm me because I was constantly in these areas and I really didn't know what to do. I didn't have any help. I didn't know, uh, or fully understand what I was doing. So I just kind of Googled, but just thinking about it and I Googled a Facebook, Googled or whatever. And I just looked up Bigfoot groups. So I found a, uh, a few Bigfoot groups. So what I did is I started um, uploading the, my, the, the photographs I had, and then I started uploading the videos. And then that allowed, I, I allowed people to judge it because everybody has their opinion. So uh, I, I allowed people to see what I had, and then people started saying there is something going on. And I didn't really feel that it was until certain people that, you know, had been in this field much, much longer than me started saying, hey, you, there's something going on in your area. And at first I was like, well, thank you, but, uh, you know, it's just another humdrum day to me. But they said, you know, have you heard things? Have you smelled things? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, well, yeah, these are some of the signs that you have to look for. And they started looking at the, the, um, the uh, structures and, uh, I know some, you know, uh, everybody goes back on in that in the Bigfoot community. Everybody battles over the structures of, you know, how it goes. If it's weather, if it's rain, if it's you know snow, heavy weather, whatever. Um, but I just continued um, doing that, and um, you know, some of the, like I said, some of the people started saying, okay, well, you have certain things here that you have to look at. You have to really start focusing on what you're doing because you're you're getting a lot of things you just don't know you're getting them <laughs> so i said okay well that's cool and that kind of that helped me to you know become part of uh the community and to kind of you know uh learn about things um obviously there's people that know more things and there's more people that know even more things than a lot of us do 
uh, I believe they have contact, you know, with these these creatures. They have them on their property, as you know. Um, they they have caused an interaction, and a lot of these people aren't giving up that information, you know. So, for the people that are beginning, like myself, we have to kind of do what we have because we don't have a uh, anything to compare it to, so to speak. Um, until, you know, until you really, I guess, until you really, really seeing these things on a constant basis or interacting or whatever you want to call it. So uh, from there, what I did is um, I would take some, I took a few people out to the area. Um, I wouldn't tell them. We, I, it was just a plain nature hike and just to see if they they saw or felt anything or anything like that or got, you know, creeped out or whatever. Unfortunately, most people were okay. Um, so what happened was uh, I met a guy. I put my stuff online. And it was a guy that was has been uh, Bigfooting since uh, the 80s. And he, we had teamed up uh, for a short time. Real nice guy. Uh, and um, he had explained to me, some of the stuff that happened because it was a lot of things in, that were going on in Maryland state. As a matter of fact, I think I posted it um, a while back on, in your group, um, we actually had a sighting and I think, I'm not sure. I'm only assuming that um, we had the closest sighting to a metropolitan area. Uh, perhaps I'm wrong, but if and people can research it for themselves and look it up, it was a 19, uh, 76, uh, big, uh, Baltimore Bigfoot incident. Um, and that's when this thing actually came up into a metropolitan area. And I've, I've seen the area and it's, 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 it's a city. It's actually a city. Um, so if anybody, you know, is interested in that, they can, they can check that out. But, uh, anyway, back to the point. Um, I, I was really in this area heavy for about a year. Um, got a few good things i uh we i started uh leaving food and you're not supposed to <laughs> but i would leave food just to see if anything would happen do the traditional thing leaving the peanut butter and crazy stuff like that and um you know sometimes that they would the, the peanut butter jars would be taken sometimes they wouldn't um at the time i would just leave a jar i wasn't really fancy about it i didn't understand didn't know like i've, I've seen a lot of the bigfoot Research and women are really good with that because they they know how to time it and, and date it and everything. I didn't understand. I just left it and, and left the lid on. And if the if it was gone or the lid was off, I was happy. But anyway, I made sure I documented it. Um, uh, what had happened <clears throat> was after I felt that I kind of exhausted the area, there was not uh, any more going on. I moved on. I ended up researching another area, uh, which is in uh, what we call Annapolis, Maryland. I uh, ended up finding out that Annapolis, Maryland had a lot of swamps and things like that. Um, when I found out about the area, uh, I took a friend of mine, and we went out to this area. Um, I was I was over anxious. I didn't know anything. I didn't know a lot about hiking and things like that because I, I hadn't I have didn't do those things since I was a kid. So, uh, I, we kind of rushed, uh, post hastily. Like it really, it wasn't cool what we did, but what we did is, uh, I called up a friend. I said, um, I want to do some video of this area. And he's a, he was skeptical. He doesn't believe in the, 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 the Sasquatch thing, but he said, okay, well, I'll go with you. So we got out there maybe about 10, maybe about 10, 10 30 at night. And I didn't understand, uh, about mapping out areas before you go in and really checking, you know, checking out things. I mean, I learned a lesson, but, and I didn't, I didn't expect anything, but what happened, I went to this real swampy area near Annapolis and the area had, had actually had a lot of sightings and the, some of the farmers in the area said, yeah, we, we see them, uh, on a regular, it got to the point where they, they I guess it didn't affect the farmers anymore because these things were following the stream. Anyway, uh, we went to the area, and, yeah, I mean, it was pitch black. Tell you, Captain Will, it was so dark out here. Um, we couldn't see anything, and at the time, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't know about hiking gear and flashlights. You know, we, 
We just use cell phones and things. I mean, it, I, I really, I had to learn a lot. I, I still don't, I'm, I'm still depending on a lot of people to educate me to, to all this stuff. But anyway, so we, we had our cell phones and uh, me and my buddy, his, his name was Tony. I, I, he doesn't care. I can say his name. Uh, but Tony and I were in this area and um, it was dark. And we couldn't see anything. I mean, it was just pitch black. And we was just, I mean, we had to watch our steps because we, we, we were just stepping over stuff left and right. We didn't know what was going on. Anyway, uh, we're standing here in the dark. He's playing on his cell phone, doing something. I, I don't know if he was playing or doing business or whatever. But um, I start to hear something. He had this crunching sound. And I was like, what is that? And it was coming up this hill. And we were standing there. And I looked at him. Because once again, he's a skeptic, so he it, it probably didn't phase him. He probably just he didn't even care. He was too busy on his phone, and you could just hear it. But it sounded like a man. And for me, I didn't understand about the whole bipedal thing mm -hmm. when these you know when these things come up on you. And this thing was just walking, but it was calm. It was not aggressive. Um, it, it was just very common. It just sounded like a man. And then that's when things really started to set in with me that this, this situ this thing that I'm doing or involved in, this thing is serious. Like, I mean, I've, I've, it, it, it's different from getting, uh, perhaps just finding tracks is great, but to hear it, that's when things kind of really set in. So it doesn't really sink in uh, until you encounter one. Right, 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 and, and and I'm getting to that too. So what happened uh, was it it continued to to walk and then it stopped, and I just I I kind of froze and I didn't want to tell Tony because I didn't want to irritate the situation or or start a whole lot of because I really didn't know I was like, is this good? Is this bad? You know, it was a lot of it was a lot of mixed you know emotions going through my my mind at the time. So I just, I, I stood silent and it stopped and that's it. So what we did is we ended up looking around the area. We put the, the cell phone flashlights up. We didn't see anything. Uh, so him and I, we, we went around cause he even said, uh, he didn't hear it, but he did say, well, come on, let's, you know, let's get moving. Let's, let's go ahead and you want to do this. So let's do this. So we went around the area. We were looking, um, Real kind of treacherous area. So anyway, uh, what what I what we had to do was um, I went back. I had to check. I checked on the area in the daytime because once again it was nighttime and we had not mapped out anything. We totally did not know this area as wild as it was. I mean, it's only it it was only by the grace of the Almighty that we didn't fall and break a leg or get bit by something. Um, so what I did is I went back um, and I started researching this area. And uh, it was a lot of craziness going on in this area, and I'll, I'll explain. Um, the area is about, I think, 17, 1,700 acres. And uh, it, it, it had, we, we, I actually found in this area, and I posted it, and, and um, I think Jeremiah knows but I make sure that, you know, I try to do the best. Anything that I tell you, I try to have either photo or video evidence of it. Um, we actually found a, a footprint in mud. It was in a stream in this area because I went back by myself the next time in the daytime because I really, really had to see what was going on. Um, I found this track by the river. Now, from the river, there was a hill. And on this hill, I really, really wanted to get up this hill. Like, I just had this, this uh, infatuation with getting up this hill. The area has a lot of briars and sticker bushes. It's terrible. So this is a nat it's just a natural environment. Nobody messes with the area. So um, I just, every day I wanted to get up this hill, but I wouldn't go up. It took me a really long time to build up the courage to get up this hill. But it, it was just, like I said, just briars, sticker bushes, just crazy. So anyway, what I did is I went, it's about maybe three entrances, or you may not be able to call them, I don't know if you want to call them entrances, but it's just us, you know, basically going in and, and knocking down some of the brush or whatever, making our own path. Uh, so what I did was I took a picture of that print, um, 
because I was interested, and this is a totally another part of the uh, of this area. So what I did is I took a picture of the print, kind of checked out that area. It's really, really swampy, really nasty. Uh, then what I did is the next day I came back, I went to the area that we had the the uh, the encounter, or we heard the, or I heard the footsteps. Come to find out that there was something that looked like a, a deer blind right by where I heard that sound. So what I did is I um, I made a video and I took I took constant pictures of this because it was just amazing and you could see that it was interwoven. It was in could it be man made maybe, but it it was too perfect. It was it was almost like a master weaver had did it. And it was something that you could actually hide behind because I actually went in there. And um, you could actually hide and nobody would probably see you. And then we noticed um, it was some, we noticed a lot of deer bones. Well, I noticed because at the time I was by myself. Tony wasn't with me. He stopped after that um, that night. But uh I found deer bones. It was like my first time really finding a, finding a huge deer bone. I still have it. I, I, I can uh, send you a picture of it if, 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 you, if you want. Sure. But, um, okay, but uh, we, we, I found deer bones. And at the time, I didn't know that these things, you know, I had to cut the little bit that, that I didn't know. We kind of had that kind of, I kind of had that the hair in the innocent, oh, it just eats plants, you know, <laughs> type thing. So if it was out there, I didn't understand I was finding deer. I was finding a lot of deer with broken necks. We were finding the spines ripped out. Uh, I found one deer that was totally shelled out where it was fur. I actually thought, at first I looked on the ground, I thought it was a fur coat. But it wasn't. The whole inside of the deer had been shelled out. Uh, like, like, kind of give you an idea, like people would clean a crab out to eat the meat. So, this was just, I, I didn't know. So, I, what I did, I just kept documenting everything. And then I started to notice, uh, this just everything just I don't even know how to explain it. It was just everything just started really uh, piling up, like all the evidence. Something was going on here, and it, it it was too much going on to be a man just running around eating deer, you know, or building building shelters to, to hide behind and what you know. It just it didn't make sense. So anyway, back to the point. Um, I kind of monitored the area that, that we had the incident that night that we heard the sound of the, 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 the thing walking up on us. And um, I noticed there were several different structures. I took pictures of them, um, things where somebody actually could hide in and, and do, some, do some serious damage if they wanted to. Or, or uh, 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 what do you call it, the, uh, 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 something bipedal. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I, f I just I, f I started seeing things just like dead deer everywhere and, and I, I documented that so what, what I did was I continued to monitor this area and I think I stayed in this area longer than the first one which was by the 295 corridor so I stayed over in the swamp over in Annapolis um, for a lot and I just went back like every day every day every day so finally, um, I, I built up the courage to get up this hill where I found the first track in the mud by the river. That was, we'll just say that's the second entrance. So the second entrance. So I went up, I finally went up the hill. It took me, it didn't take long. It was like maybe an hour. So I was walking and to my left, I saw something that looked odd out the corner of my eye. Now, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a Sasquatch, <laughs> but what it was, I looked down, it was a huge ditch that looked like it had been dug out. But what happened was I, it was a, almost like a, it looked like a wigwam. And it was a, I looked at it and I said, wait a second, this is, this is actually something that something or somebody could actually get in. And, and kind of hide out for a few days because this was on top of a hill. It was uh, nobody? I mean, unless you were escaped convict, you wouldn't be running through a whole bunch of sticker bushes that, just to get up a hill for no reason. So I, I looked and I said, "Man, this is crazy." I said, "This is actually a, a full sustainable shelter." 
And from the, I'd heard that people were finding, you know, TP structures and things like that. I said, this isn't a TP structure. Something large can actually get in here and bed down for the night. And it just really, it, that's when I was like, man, this area is really, really crazy. So I, I took pictures of the, the, the structure, and I think, I, I'm, I think Jeremiah's seen it, but it, it, it looks like it was intelligent design. It, it wasn't tree fall. You can definitely tell it was not tree fall, and it was not, it was not weather. So I documented that, and that was right by the footprint. So I'm assuming whatever uh, left that print had stepped in that river, left the print, and then went up the hill and had used that shelter for whatever it was, you know, for whatever it was doing. So uh, I documented that. Um, I kind of hung out in that area for a few days, too. I uh, took pictures of the area. I started seeing some um, kind of like some uh, semi-unusual things, uh, what, what I believe, I guess, would structures of whatever this thing was doing was breaking trees or bending things but the one thing that I I did think that really kind of said that something was in this area was the fact that I found a lot of things that were woven like it they, they would but they were too they were the branches and the structures they were just too strong for just somebody to sit there in you know, just try to weave, you know, you, it's hard to weave a huge branch, you know, it just, it would take too much time. And these things were huge, we, you know, a tall person, maybe six, four, maybe six, four, six, five or tall, it could hide behind. Uh, so from there, uh, I had a buddy and I, I mentioned him earlier. I'm, I'm going to bring him into what I'm saying. Um, I had a buddy, he, he noticed some of my stuff online. He's been researching since the eighties. Really great, cool guy. Really great guy. Um, he said, I'd like to go out with you. Uh, I want to check out some stuff. So, you know, I told him, I said, well, hey, look, um, hey, it's cool. You know, I, I think we have a active or semi-active. I said, I don't think they're living here, but I do believe that they have passed through or they are passing through because there's a lot of crazy stuff going on here. So um, we he went out with me, and we, we retraced the steps that happened that night to me at a, about 10.30 p.m., and um, he, he had went with me, and, he, and we went through. We found out that the track, the, the pathway that this thing was walking up, it was too treacherous because it was uh, an enormous amount of sticker bushes, it, just to the point where it would shred your skin. It was terrible. But he helped me kind of map it out, and he was like, "There's no way an average man, and, and I mean, unless it was a nutso or on, on meth. But other than that, you, I mean, you would have got your skin torn to bits. I mean, it's just too many briar patches. I mean, the area just it it has briar anyway, but not like this. This was just a thicket of briar. It, it wouldn't even made any sense for him and being to walk this this pathway. So anyway, um. We started exploring some more of the area, uh, and it it got to the point where we it was a I, I developed a love hate relationship with the area because sometimes we would hear things, we would see things, um, and or, or we would get some pictures, and then somebody may I'd let people uh, look them over. I didn't want to assume anything. Um, I wanted to make sure, you know, that I was kind of on the right path. I didn't want to say, hey, you see this? You know, some people take pictures of a bush and say, hey, you see that in there? I didn't want to go down that pathway. So if I heard something or saw it, I tried to take a picture. Um, I would do old techniques like we learned in high school uh, with, the, <laughs> with three shutter speed and all that. And, mm -hmm. and, and I would try to, you know, just do kind of sneaky stuff, put the camera on my back or put it on my leg and take a picture and act like I'm, I'm not paying any attention. And, and it got it got some okay, I think it got some good results. Um, so we, I think we kept, we kept in this area. Um, I, I, sometimes I would return back to the area on the 295 quarter. I would go over there just to check up on things. Um, I would, I would leave food. And once again, I know you're not supposed to, but I would leave food just to see. Sometimes it would be taken, sometimes it wouldn't. Um, I got lucky 
actually when I went back to the, the our first area uh, about 295 corridor, uh, it looked like we found a baby print. I took a picture of it um, by where I left the food. And the food had been, you could tell it had been tampered with. Um, and then I saw a baby print right by the lake. So that was really cool. That was great, which I'm hoping, it, you know, maybe it was a, uh, almost like a newborn juvenile. So I found one print, showed it to a few people that uh, they had been a little bit more better with prints and getting, you know, getting a lot more activity than I was. And they said, yeah, that, that looks like the real deal. Um, so I had the, the baby print from the first one, and then I had the, what looked to would look like the adult print. Um, I didn't have the the definitive big toe print. That's my goal is to get get that big toe. Which actually I'll I'll get to that. So um, we continued to just kind of you know explore the area. Uh, started going deeper and deeper. Um, really nasty area. Like I said before, um, we. We overdid it. One night we kind of hung out too late and it was summer. We ended up getting ticks, had to go to the hospital. Uh, I, had, I had them in my stomach. Like, it was drilling into my stomach. One was on me. Actually, it was only by the grace of the Almighty that it didn't give me Lyme because they were sitting on me for about 20. It had to have been like a day because we, we went out one night and then I found one in my navel and then one in my private. In my scrotum. Oh boy! Just starting to, <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just starting. To, and, I mean, she was just starting to drill in there, boy. I tell you, then I, I caught them. So you know, I took the samples and everything, packed them, <laughs> ran to the hospital. <laughs> oh, I laugh because so, I've had ticks on my stomach, and, and a friend of mine got his in his private areas too. So, <laughs> oh my goodness! But I, I tell you, Captain Will, it, it was crazy, man. I tell you, because uh, uh, I, I never had ticks, and, and actually, the, uh, my buddy that had went with me, um, he I didn't even know because he called me. He said, "Check yourself." check yourself he kept saying check yourself you, you might have ticks on you and i didn't know i thought ticks were like a mosquito you, you get bit you go about your business um but he was like no and he was really serious i was like oh nothing you know it's okay he said man i'm telling you check your, check yourself so i checked myself i didn't see anything until the next day so uh long story short took pulled them out took the pliers tweezers bagged them up took them to the hospital make sure they caught it you know caught caught everything and uh um you know, gave me antibiotics and everything. He said, but you're okay. You, it's good. You caught them. You're okay. So that, that worked out well. But that just really, I mean, the area is just, like I said, it's just nasty. I stepped on a cop, black, I think black, I think they're black, black copperhead or it was a black snake. Uh, almost got bit by one. Um, and we have, now we have a coyote <laughs> running around the area. So I, I, I haven't, I haven't, um, uh, I've heard him, I think, but I, I haven't met him yet. We have a coyote and a turkey running around there. So uh, we have to be kind of careful. But anyway, uh, well, not him. I'm sorry, it's a female, and she has a pup. So we definitely have to be careful. But um, we, we, found, we found a lot of good things here. A uh, lot, lot of, heard a lot of crazy things. Sometimes we was, once winter came, um, we would try to get kind of to a, a, a less wilder location of the area and kind of just sit on a hill uh, so we can, you know, kind of just hear things, take things in. Uh, what happened in this area was after a while it died down, and like I said, it, it began a love-hate relationship I would kind of go back to the area when I didn't have the my buddy with me I'd go back most of the time by myself and um, it'd be a while sometimes it would be two weeks nothing would happen you wouldn't hear anything you wouldn't see anything no tracks no you know no prints no nothing um, and then we had I, I went out there one day and the military was out there I said oh goodness so I looked at the uh, the military vehicles and I think if I'm correct they were unmarked and I have a picture. I took a picture of them. Um, I documented that, too. Um, then the area started kind of to heat up. Things started to get kind of crazy again. Uh, the military was out there. I wasn't. Uh, I didn't want to ask them because I didn't want them to say, hey, you can't go in. So I, just, I looked at them, took my picture, and just snuck in the area. Um, I found what appeared to be hair, but at the time I didn't understand about 
the DNA testing and all that. I saw the hair. I, I, t- I had taken a picture of that. The hair was right right around some unusual things that looked like structures. Uh, so I got I got some photos of that. Um, after that situation, um, I started to kind of add up and put two and two together because all the areas we were going in, we always started having an incident or something strange where there was either uh, – some type of law enforcement uh, have an unusual situation. Like in the first area, the, the ranger had just hauled butt. Uh, he, he hauled butt out of there. And um, the, the new area, we had the military there, uh, marked vehicles. Uh, and then another time, actually, I'm not sure if it was, to be honest with you, I'm not sure if it was a few weeks or a few months. Um, I still continue to go to the area. Uh, I went in there one day, and then that's when um, the uh, forestry worker, policeman, and uh, I think we, nat- natural resources police came up. Um, they were really, really cool. I just kept my cool. They saw me, um, and they asked me, one of the guys asked me, he said, hey, son, ha- have you seen anything? Um, unusual or heard anything, and obviously, <laughs> yes, I, I have I've seen it. Or, but I, yeah, I didn't want to blow the spot up, and I felt guilty. But I told them no, no, sir. And I just, I didn't want them to to uh, lock the area off in case. So um, they were out there, and I think I think they got a picture of their their vehicles. Um, but fortunately. You know, they let me go in that day. They didn't stop me, and that was it. After that, uh, I just kept doing the same thing over and over. Um, after things uh, died down, uh, we had found another area that we didn't we didn't even know, and this took like maybe almost a year. And that was kind of a thicket of thorn bushes and everything, but it wasn't as bad. It was it was overwhelming. It, it actually, you could get claustrophobic, and area, but it wasn't where you couldn't get through it, which was cool. So we found um, another area. We, we looked at that area. We didn't, uh, well, yeah, things did kind of get kind of, <laughs> I wouldn't say they did, but they did get kind of crazy. We ended up staying in this area um, and found out that it led to an open field with power lines. Um, so what we did is we, we went through a thicket um, of uh, thorn, thorn bushes. Uh, we went over by a power line, and we kind of hung out for a while. It was The sun was going down, and then that's when we heard something over in the brush. So I asked my, uh, my buddy, as a matter of fact, this was when I got uh, my, who's my partner now, um, JP. And, and JP had just... He was totally new to Bigfooting. I'm, I'm, I didn't know what I was doing either. So JP had a thermal. He didn't have a thermal on him uh, that night, which I was like, ugh, darn it. But we heard something in the bushes, and we saw what looked like crushed deer bones by the power lines. We saw what looked like something that stepped on them. Um, I did document that. I was just, I was really upset though that that he didn't have a thermal. And go figure, it, but because we did hear something in the brush near the crushed deer bones. Um, so now when we go out, I just constantly always remind them, bring your thermal, bring your thermal, no matter what, just please bring your thermal. Um, after, after that, now, now I have to back up what, what happened, um, before we had that night where we found the crushed deer pones and we found the power lines, cause we didn't even know power lines were, were at the end of this area. Um, I posted some stuff. I had a woman, real nice lady. She asked me um, to come out to her her property. She said she had these things. And um, she had a few pictures, a few unusual weird things. And, but once again, yeah, I was still, still still a little bit skeptical. Um, she'd show, show me crazy pictures. of She'd, she'd leave out whole banana pictures. Uh, I forget what you call them, but banana stems or whatever, and leave them out. And then the next day, the bananas would be neatly pulled out, but the whole stem was intact. Like, you know, as human beings, we just rip a banana off, you know, and go about your business. 
but uh, she would leave them in her driveway. She said these things were coming up in her driveway, which really amazed me. So, and I think this was the, I think this was the winter of 20, I think this was the end of 2016, some kind of, to toward the beginning of maybe 2017. So I'm kind of going back and forth. You have to excuse me because um, it's been a while. So uh, what happened was she kind of showed me. She showed me these unusual things where she showed me these, it looked like black figures in a woods or in a tree line, but I just couldn't make them out. And um, she showed me these the crazy things like the banana rhymes and things like that. So uh, I said, well, look, you know, we got to really talk and we became good friends uh, online and then we talked on the phone and, you know, really, really clicked and just really became, even beyond Bigfoot, just really became good friends. So uh, she said, well, look, I have a bad leg. I can't get all the way onto my property, so I'm going to need you to come out here <laughs> and get on my property. Now, this is, Captain Will, this is when things, I noticed that th this wasn't as black and white as I thought. Mm -hmm. And... Um, she really kind of expanded my world on this. What happened, she's in Virginia. Uh, not, uh, if I'm correct, I don't, think, I don't think she's actually far from Quantico. So uh, we went to her area, and I, I wish I could, you know, tell you the area, but she, she, did, she, she won't, it won't allow us to reveal the area because it's, it's definitely something going on. So anyway, uh, I called up a buddy, a co-worker of mine, and I said, uh, you, you want to go out and just you know, help me do some filming? And he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> and he said, well, that's crazy, but okay, I'm open-minded. So it was great. So he came out, and um, he, uh, he brought a, uh, his lady friend with, his, with him. So that was great. So we all went out there together, met up uh, with the woman, and um, automatically things just got set off. We were there in the daytime. We pulled up, uh, we spoke for about maybe tw 20 minutes. So she said, okay, I'm going to show you where to go down. She had a steep hill. She had a backyard and a steep hill. She said, go down that hill and check out and see if you hear or see anything. And I looked, and I guess just kind of, I, I, I call myself a structure nut. I guess really, like, if I, I love structure uh, I love just seeing the cracks, the breaks. I don't. I know everybody doesn't believe in it, but I love it, and it's just great. But I didn't see that, and when I did did not see that, I I was upset um, because I said, "Well, I don't, I don't see anything." And plus, the land wasn't massive; it, it wasn't massive. Uh, uh, it, it was a little bit of land. But once again, at that time, I did not know the little bit more that I do know now. So anyway. Went down her property. We were checking out the land, uh, and I, me and my partner, we left the, the young lady. We left her up on the hill uh, with the woman. I told her just, you know, just in case, stay up here, <laughs> stay up here. We, we don't want any trouble. We may have trouble getting just us, the two guys, out of there. So we went down, and uh, I started hearing this tree shake, and it was just crazy. I was looking at the tree, and. I was just standing there, but I didn't feel uh, I didn't feel scared. I was just in awe. I was in amazement, and you can hear it. It really sounds like people say they say they sound like monkeys, and I just heard this tree shaking, and it just sounded like little monkeys shaking a tree, and you could hear them. And they wanted to come out that tree. Whatever was behind that tree shaking this tree like crazy wanted to come out of that tree. I can tell you that now. I don't know if it was the juvies wanted to come out and cause havoc or hurt us or play or and maybe the adults obviously they say when the kids are around the you know mom and dad are around so maybe dad or mom was around telling them in our own way hey don't come out those are humans they seem cool but don't come out that tree you know or you're going to get a spanking tonight but these things really you could hear the aggressiveness they wanted to come out the tree and you could hear them moving around it was just crazy so that was that was kind of like my my, uh, what do you call it, second hearing or audio. I don't, I don't know how to say it properly. You have to excuse me. But um, so I, I heard them just crazy, just shaking the tree. So my partner at the time, um, or my buddy or whatever, my friend, he 
he, st- he at first he was kind of mellow, but I think something had kicked in. Like he really saw that something was going on, and he wasn't prepared for this because this was his first time out doing this. And I just saw fear come over his face, and I I was like, "Are you are you okay?" And he said. Um, we'll look around, let's just look around, let's hurry up and look around a little bit more. So we looked around, um, and we, not too much, we didn't see anything, we didn't see any structures or anything like that. Um, and then we saw a steep hill that led into the lady's backyard. So we didn't take the same pathway we went down, we went up a steep hill, so we climbed the hill. I said, look, let's go up this hill, just, I just want to see maybe if we can find some, you know, something, some structures. Um, so... I guess in my mind, hearing hearing them for the first time, I didn't really fathom the depth of it. I didn't. I, I cherish it now, and I cherished it at the time, but I didn't cherish it as, probably as much as I should because I I couldn't I, I I couldn't um I didn't know I didn't understand that they say these things do sound like monkeys. It just amazed me. Yeah, I've actually but, heard it myself. Right. Yeah. I, I guess I know. I know you have you. I know you have, and, and 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 well, let me ask you this, Captain. Well, did did they did they really sound like monkeys? I mean, well, there were two of them one night above a, a group of my friends. We were just up by Mount Rainier in Washington camping, and we were sitting around a fire, just kind of chatting, thinking about hanging and heading into town to get some burgers, and we heard two of them above us, maybe a hundred feet okay. above us on the hill, and for. All intents and purposes, one sounded just like a chimp. <laughs> that is just great. like a chimp. Yes. The other one was totally different, but the mm-hmm. one sounded like a chimp. Mm-hmm. That is great. Yeah, and that's that's the same thing. I sounded like primates. They sounded like monkeys. Um. So, what what wound up happening? We went up the hill. Then we saw like maybe one or two possible structures. We heard something, and that's another thing. We heard something go up this hill, maybe to the left side of us, but we didn't see anything. So we went in the lady's backyard, and then that's when I finally, I finally actually got a real good print with the toe. It was a big toe, but it looked like a juvenile. So I, I really, I was like, this is, this is serious. This, I mean, this lady doesn't have a mass of land, but these things, something's running around here. So. I got a picture of that, documented that, got the toe print. So my partner, he felt, I guess he felt a little bit better because then we were right in her backyard. So he said, well, let's just hang out here. Let's look around, see if we see anything. So we looked in her backyard, uh, looked around, um, nothing. We ended up, she said, she had called us because by then she had went in the house uh, with the young lady that was with us. Uh, so the, the, the woman that owned the property, she said, well, come on, you know, come on in, um, you know, I have some dinner for you all. Take a dinner break, and then you can start back up. So we took a dinner break. What happened was the young lady that had came with us after we finished eating, she went outside to take a smoke break. Well, I'm sitting there, and we're chit-chatting, having a real good talk, and we're just talking about the property, you know, and I'm asking this lady questions because I couldn't fathom it. Uh, my partner or my buddy at the time, he, he was, I mean, he was just kind of, you know, he was scared, but he was really keep trying to be- his best to keep calm. So I asked him, I said, are you okay? He said, well, I didn't tell you this, but, but when we came in, I saw something brown and white kind of jet by the bottom of the hill before we even got down the hill. And I said, I wish you had told me that, but, you know, I, I can't, I'm not pissed at you. I just wish you had told me <laughs> in the beginning. So he had already apparently seen something. But he went down the hill anyway, and I guess he he didn't fathom it until he heard this sound, these things, the, the sound they make, um, when he, when the fear really crept in him. So anyway, uh, back to the point. The young lady went out. I was t- We were talking and discussing, and then something just kind of hit me. I said, I, I better go outside. This girl's outside by herself, and we just, you know, we've heard and seen this, all this crazy stuff so far. So I went outside. uh and she said, um, you, you see that? I said, I don't see anything. And she said, I saw eyes shine. Now, mind you, this girl knows nothing about, she knew nothing about Sasquatch, nothing about the legend, which was actually perfect. And I said, oh, you know, I just kind of played it off. And I said, well, it's probably just uh, a deer. And she said, well, do you know any deer eight feet tall? Because uh, if you look over there in the tree, I just saw it. But I, did, I didn't see it personally. 
But then that's when things started to elevate. The situation, situation, excuse me, the situation started to elevate. And then I heard something come up on the left side of this lady's house. And it was shifting through the leaves. You could just hear it. It sounded like a group of people. So I ran to the side of the house. I didn't see anything. But I heard, and you could just hear these things coming up on the side of the house. And I thought at first, oh, it's, you know, probably just maybe it's kids in the area, you know, just joking or maybe they're just wondering why we're here on this lady's property. Those weren't kids that ran up on the side of the house. I can tell you that now because I didn't see any little kids. I looked. I couldn't see anything. And, and before, I didn't, I didn't know that these things could camouflage so well. So I'm assuming maybe the juveniles had ran up on the side of the house on the left side. They heard me come out and wanted to know what I was doing. But the male or whatever, or the female, they gave the, the eight-foot-tall eye shine to the girl that was with us. She had seen that, and she had heard something. And I think, Captain, well, I'll tell you this. I think that we got more activity because she was there. And I, I really think, I'm, I'm not sure if she had a fragrance about her or, or good something like that, but I really think these things really wanted to get close to her. Because the lady told me that these things come up to her window. They knocked on her, her uh, they knock on the house all the time. They get in her trash. They get in her garage. And um, and we still keep in touch. I, I haven't been back to the property um, since because uh, her father who owns the property, he he's, um, I think he has dementia, but we, I guess having us around kind of made him nervous. Um, so we had to respect his wishes. Um, so I, unfortunately we haven't been able to go back out, but, uh, at that night, I really think these things got activated, really started making noise and moving around when they saw her. So I, we, we stayed out there for a while and I, I checked my truck cause I have a little, uh, Mazda SUV. So I checked, um, the truck just to see if anything, uh, any type of prints were on the on the truck or anything like that. It was nothing. So, what we did was um, we went to uh, we went back in the house. We just documented everything, um, just discussed what happened for the day, and we just wrapped up shop. And by that time, it was like maybe eleven something. So we we just uh, we we headed back home. We just we did what we could. We documented. I didn't understand about um, uh, audio at the time, so unfortunately, I didn't record the noises now now i know better mm -hmm. but um uh we headed on back home now uh we had an, another situation um after after that i guess documenting a few things then um we, we started getting a little bit of notoriety because i didn't mind traveling i, I actually like to travel with people you know if they if they want us to come and check the area out or, or whatever, or if they feel scared or whatever, we're, we're happy to go out. You know, if anybody wants us to, we'll, we'll definitely go out. And if, you know, they want us to stay or whatever, we'll stay. So um, after I lost him, <laughs> my partner from that night, because he was just totally freaked out. He, he won't go out anymore. He would barely talk to me. We just, as a matter of fact, we just started. <laughs> that, <laughs> we just that tends started to happen. <laughs> right. Well, you, you know, Captain Will, you, you know how it is. Uh so, uh, <laughs> so um, we, we we started talking again, uh, but uh, he still won't go out. I, I tried to get him because he under he he was so open minded that he does. And he, I mean, he's a really really smart guy. I, I would love to have him, but anyway, that did work out. So uh, a few months, I went back to Maryland, went back to my area. Things were kind of dry for a while. Um, not too much action. Um, then I got a call from a, a buddy in Virginia. He said, hey, um, I see what you're doing in Maryland. You, you know, you, you seem pretty serious. You want to come out, uh, investigate this lady's area with me um, back in Virginia. So I said, hey, that's great. Um, once again, the lady doesn't want her name or the property to be revealed. Mm -hmm. Sorry. But uh, we went out there, and um, that was really good. We actually, I actually did a video of that night. And um, that's when I had my first sighting of a uh, juvenile, I, or what I consider to be a juvenile. Um, 
we we had we had checked that area in the daytime. You know, like I said, I learned my lesson about that. <laughs> so uh, we checked out the thing. We saw some unusual things that you know look like tree breaks. Re- really cool, you know. So we we took pictures of that. Um, we surveyed the area. This lady is very very high up in the mountains of Virginia. She was, I think, like three three national parks or something like that. So, I mean, it, anything could happen around here. So she definitely had land mass. These things they had. It was plenty of food. There was rivers. Um, definitely, if they wanted to hide, they could hide. Dave, so, Dave, let me was, let me interrupt you there. We're oh, almost sorry. out of time. I, I tell I'm you, sorry. I can tell you've got a ton of information yet. So I really, what I'd like to do is a second part. Okay. And I think this is a great spot to kind of leave it at a cliffhanger because you're going to talk about this first sighting of a juvenile. Okay. And and I jotted that down so I know that's where we start from. Uh, before we end, do you want to give out any contact information, an email or something, if people in your region want to get a hold of you? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's fine. Um, anybody that wants to, um, they can either message me at uh, David you know, Thundercloud and Messenger. Um, once again, my Facebook page is David Thundercloud, same thing. Um, if they want to email me, that's uh, David Thundercloud at uh, all one word at yahoo.com. Um, they can contact me like that. Uh, if they, you know, need anything, uh, we, like I said, we, 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 we started traveling, so it could be Maryland, Virginia, PA, we'll, we'll go, uh, you know, time and, and job permitting, we'll go if people need us. Um, and that's it. Like, and it's 24 hours. If, if anybody wants to contact, you know, contact me on a uh, messenger or you, they can do it 24 hours. I, I don't have any time restrictions. Um, and that's it. Excellent, Dave. Uh, yeah. folks, this is this is part one. We're going to be doing part two, uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, it'll be the week following this episode. So, Dave, I'm looking forward to hearing that story. Uh, we'll uh, we'll get in touch off the off the uh, recording. So, and then set that up. I, I will we'll discuss when it's good for you, but um, we'll get that done real soon so I can do these as consecutive shows. Okay. Okay, thank you, and I, I definitely I appreciate you, Captain Will. Thank you for your time. And I appreciate you. I, you know, Dave is is one of our one of our better uh, JRG Jumping Research Group members. So, uh, if you're in his part of the country and you've seen something or think you've seen something, by all means, get a hold of him. Yes. Oh, uh, Captain. One more thing. Yeah. Um, and if anybody has any, because um, I, I have a few people that messenger me and they do want to talk about their experiences, um, they can also post their experiences at Bigfoot United and Worldwide. That's our Facebook page. And if they want to post anything or just want to talk about anything, um, they can. They're, they're more than welcome to. All right, my friend. Well, we'll stop it here at a cliffhanger. I know, I know, my listeners aren't going to like that, but uh, <laughs> it's always it's always a great place to stop. So let's let's make plans on the side to do the second interview, and we'll stop for now. Okay, you got it. All right, buddy. Well, listen, we'll be talking real soon. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain Will. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining me this week. Be sure to tune in again next week as we explore another account from a witness of the unknown.